Hello friends, welcome to Pathological Concepts. Today we are going to learn about a very important concept about cell death. That is apoptosis. We, we are going to see the definition, the causes or condition in which it arises, what is the mechanism of apoptosis, its pathway, extrinsic and intrinsic pathway, along with the enzyme involved, the regulation and we will see the diagnosis. So let's get started. Talking about definition. So, apoptosis is defined as a pathway of cell death that is induced. Pathway of cell death which is induced. And these are tightly regulated suicide program. in which the cell which are destined to die, they activate certain enzymes which are present in the cells and degrade its own DNA and nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins. So this apoptosis was first discovered in the year 1972 and uh, it was originated from the Greek word which means falling off and uh, the death is so well regulated that is aptly called as programmed cell death. So moving ahead we will see the si situation in which it occurs. So, if you talk about causes of apoptosis, uh, there are two conditions in which it is involved. The condition may be physiologic or may be pathologic. So, talking about physiologic conditions, during embryogenesis so the destruction of cell during embryogenesis takes place with the help of apoptosis also it is involved in the involution of hormone dependent tissue involution of hormone dependent tissue for example if you talk about the menstrual cycle ovarian follicular atresia in menopause and at the time of weaning further the other physiologic condition is cell loss in proliferating cell population now what do we mean by this is that in bone marrow and thymus there is continuous proliferation of cells so we cannot expect the cells to accumulate more so there should be a regulation so that we have proper amount of cells and this is controlled by the process of apoptosis. Moving ahead we have another situation where potentially harmful self-reactive lymphocytes. So self-reactive lymphocytes, these are destroyed by the process of apoptosis and uh, one important thing is if this does not happen then these reactive lymphocytes they will start destroying our own 
tissues so it will result in autoimmune response so it's very much important that the self reactive lymphocytes should be eliminated after they have completed their maturation now next we have certain cells which have role in the inflammatory response and uh, when their response get over they need to be eliminated so removal of inflammatory cells after their work is over talking about pathologic situations we have got uh, most important dna damage now this condition arises because the cell cannot repair itself irreversible injury has occurred to the cell and cell is destined to die and one of the important situation is dna damage another condition is accumulation of misfolded protein here the protein tertiary and quaternary structures are not formed and there is misfolding of protein so the cells are destined to die and that takes place with the help of apoptosis if you talk about infection there are certain infection for example viral infection where apoptosis takes place and uh, lastly we can say there are duct obstructions like in case of uh, pancreas parotid gland now in this kind of glands there is duct obstruction and there is pathologic atrophy in the parenchyma so right now we see the causes moving on to the mechanism we'll see the mechanism of apoptosis we learned the enzyme that is involved so most important enzyme is which is the most important enzyme it, these are proteases proteases are the most important enzyme and these proteases are aspartate dependent and uh, basically these are aspartate directed aspartate directed and uh, cysteine dependent what does this mean is it breaks the protein after aspartic residue so we have C from here, ASP from here, and ases from here, and we have got caspases as the most important enzyme involved in apoptotic pathway. Remember this. Now there are two pathways involved, but before that we will look about the types of caspases and its role. so caspases these are of two types initiator caspase executioner caspase now initiator caspases are caspase 
टू एट नाइन एंड टेन एंड एग्जीक्यूशनर आर थ्री सिक्स एंड सेवन Moving about towards mechanism, the apoptosis. It's a two-step process. First is initiation. and the second is execution so in initiation we have got extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway all these pathway lead to activation of executioner cast bases and further cleavage of substrate occurs and we see the morphologic features of apoptosis so talking about extrinsic pathway first suppose this is the plasma membrane this is the plasma membrane i am drawing and this is the cytosol of cell here is cytosol this is the external environment so the pl the plasma membrane has got receptor named death domain so this receptor this is the death receptor and it has got death domain now this death receptor is involved so extrinsic pathway is also known as death receptor pathway now whenever this receptor is involved there is a ligand and uh, this death receptor are of types fas or tnf tumor necrosis factor receptor and there is a ligand if if this is a fas type then there is a ligand called fas ligand fas ligand which bind here and it causes conform conformational change in the plasma membrane so what happens is see there is accumulation of more receptors say 3 and more than 3 and it lead to formation of death domain and fast associated death domain is formed in short known as fad now what this fad do 
this causes the inactive form of caspase that is procaspase 8 to get converted into activated caspase 8. Now this activated caspase it causes further activation of caspase 3, 6 and 7. So one important concept here is all the caspases note it all caspases are present in inactive form. All caspases are present in inactive form. So caspase 8 is involved in the extrinsic pathway. Now we will see what happens after activation of caspase 3, 6 and 7, the execution phase. Since these caspases 3, 6, 7, these are executioner caspases. They causes nuclear breakdown and breakdown of cytoskeleton. So what happens? Suppose this is the cell. There is formation of bleb. Cytoplasmic bleb forms. It get detached from the cells and uh, since these are membrane bound structures these are known as apoptotic bodies now as we can see these mem these are membrane bound structures so one very important benefit is that there is no inflammatory response now why this is important because the another death process known as necrosis there is inflammatory response but here in apoptosis there is no inflammatory response now what happens with these apoptotic bodies these are engulfed by the macrophages these are engulfed by the macrophages we we'll see this is the macrophage and they engulf the apoptotic bodies and the removal of these uh, cells occur and it is so rapid that uh, there is uh, no residual of these cells. So you can see whole thing here. I am repeating it. We have seen the fast ligand and uh, the fast the fast ligand attached to fast receptor this is the fast receptor and the fast ligand attaches to it and it causes formation of dead domain and associated protein are attached leading to formation of fad and where pro caspase are activated into caspase 8 and leading to formation of activation of caspase and uh, further the cell form blebs these are the blebs and uh, apoptotic body are formed which are engulfed by the macrophages this is the macrophage and there is no inflammatory response so moving on next we have got intrinsic pathway Now, 
intrinsic pathway takes place from mitochondria suppose this is the mitochondria and this is the intermembrane space and the structure which i am drawing here these are cytochrome c so normally cytochrome c are present in intermembrane space but what happens here in intrinsic pathway there is leakage of cytochrome c so cytochrome c comes in the outside cell outside of the cell in cytoplasm sorry outside of mitochondria in the cytoplasm in cytoplasm it combines with the apoptosis activating factor 1 apaf1 this is designated as apaf1 apoptosis activating factor 1 and uh, this lead to formation of this this molecule is known as apoptosome so apopto apoptosome now this complex is we like hexamer it's we like hexamer and uh, this again binds with the procaspase 9 and convert it to activated caspase 9 now again this activated caspase will further activate caspases 3 6 and 7 and you know that these are executioner caspases so same picture this one this process again occurs and there is a apoptotic response mediated by caspase takes place so how this is regulated talking about regulation of intrinsic pathway a regulation of apoptosis now one more thing that since this uh, intrinsic pathway involve mitochondria it is also known as mitochondrial pathway so moving on next we have regulation of apoptosis and in this we will see there are bcl two family of genes and uh, these bcl2 family and then there are genes which are known as pro apoptotic genes and uh, anti apoptotic so what is this anti the pro apoptotic ones are Back, back, and anti-apoptotic are BCL2, BCL XL, MCL1. So, what these do? 
see suppose this is the mitochondria as we know that cytochrome c is present in the intermembrane space we all know as we have seen earlier so normally there are growth factors and uh, these growth factors lead to formation of this anti apoptotic molecules so bcl2 is there and it prevents the leakage of cytochrome c so here cytochrome c does not come out no cytochrome c in cytoplasm but here in proapoptotic condition when there is cessation of growth factor so what happens there is oligomerization in the membrane and uh, this cytochrome c comes out so now we have got cytochrome c and we have seen the mechanism previously so there are also sensors family name sensors now what they basically do is that it comprises of tad bim bed backs sorry uh, not backs backs is involved in proapoptotic it is puma noxa now these members are there and uh, they basically inactivate anti apoptotic genes and activate pro apoptotic gene so they sensors they basically inactivates anti apoptotic gene and they activates the pro apoptotic genes so favoring apoptosis now moving ahead if we talk about how we diagnose if we talk about diagnosis so in hne stain in histopathology since there is no inflammation so apoptotic bodies are seen as dense eosinophilic cytoplasm with condensed nuclear material we find dense eosinophilic cytoplasm with condensed nuclear material so dense eosinophilic cytoplasm and fragments of nuclear material we can also access the amount of cytochrome c uh we can also see the activated caspases and what else we can do is there is a dye named anexin 5 anexin 5 now we can also use this dye to know the apoptosis now how it, this dye helps us it's because see the cell 
which forms apoptotic bodies they express phosphatidyl serine they express phosphatidyl serine on their surface phosphatidyl serine on their surface and this is the reason why macrophage easily engulf these cells so because of the phosphatidyl serine and this annexin 5 binds with this is molecule and we can access the amount of apoptosis now one more phenomena we saw here in apoptosis that there is fragmentation of nuclear material dna fragments are seen so there is a technique known as tunnel technique tunnel technique now what is this tunnel this is is terminal deoxynucleotide transfer is mediated deoxy UTP nick and labeling nick and labeling so this becomes t u n e l so this is a method used for the accessing dna fragmentation to access dna fragmentation so remember this tunnel technique so that's all for now guys hope you like the video thanks for watching see you soon bye